Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Welcome back and take three. Yes. Welcome back, guys. Thank you guys so much for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. Mm -hmm. And we do want to thank our newest patrons. Indeed, we want to say a huge thank you to Naughty Pine and Nana of One. Thank you guys so much for your support and straight on to all the things that are going on. And so this article is saying yesterday was Israel's 9-11. And yeah, it, it, it was and is still an ongoing event of epic proportions. And, you know, there's so many different questions arising as to how possibly this could have happened apparently so unperceived, unknown, by surprise. It should not be by surprise at all, in fact. And again, uh, we, I, we've we actually said that there will be something bigger than 9-11. Uh, just like a week or two ago, we were, we were saying that in video. Uh, and this happened in Israel, but this scene will be replayed in different ways, but again, similar in many of the NATO countries, and especially in the U.S., I know, which is a huge concern because just because this looks like it's very far away does not mean that it's not going to have an impact right where we're at. We have to remember we're in a, a very large a bubble. We are all in this together. So everything that affects everyone somehow makes its way back here. And there's so, so many different types of finger pointing going on I think we would be foolish to think that this isn't going to affect us here at home no <clears throat> look at what happened there and just come to the realization uh, that in all the NATO countries you know there are innumerable people there illegally not that they're all going to all of a sudden be activated not all but even if you had a small fraction that were part of uh, basically an invasion force that's massive that is massive uh, we've been on record going back to january of 2018 stating that there is a trojan horse plan in effect uh you know clearly stating that the plan is to create civil unrest and try to create civil war slash revol revolution within the United States before there's a red dawn scenario. And what we what we see right now is all part of that plan. It's it's about the takedown of NATO and and it's about supplanting it with a system that will be uh, much more controllable. You know, I saw I think it was yeah, it was Ben Davidson, you know, suspicious observers made a comment yesterday saying well that could never happen in the u.s or something to that effect because there's so many people that are armed in the u.s and i've seen that statement made countless times before but again the first blows have already been landed and the fighter has been paid to take a dive so to speak this is the big realization that's gone on uh, if you think again that the the U.S. government has been acting strange, there's a good reason for it because <laughs> this is this is unlocking the the gates so the barbarians can come in. And and no offense to the migrants, just using different phrase phrases from past history. When we think to the fall of Rome, barbarians at the gates. Well, yeah, Rome fell because of that. They fell because of their own decadence. They fell because of their own luxury. And in reality, they, they, it was a planned fall. It was, again, another planned fall. This, this is all completely orchestrated. Here you have these, you know, again, they're labeling them terrorists. And certainly they're causing terror. But again, uh, the the Palestinians themselves, as we pointed out historically, I mean, these are people that had their land taken from them. And, you know, for 1900 years about, uh, there was no Israel. There was no Israel. It didn't exist. Uh, it only came back into being uh, due to the workings of the secret societies 
and the UN and the Rothschilds and so many other, um, again, of these power families, apparent power families, but really head puppet families. It, it was orchestrated in order to bring about this war, really. The war to end all wars in this particular uh, dark age. This is a uh, opening salvo. This is, you know, something that is, we should take it as a warning to everybody to kind of get your preparations in order as much as possible and do not be pulled into the hatred because, again, this is what they ultimately want. Uh, yeah, absolute horrible atrocities that have gone on. You know, and so it was Israel suffering from these atrocities yesterday, but really the, the Palestinians have too, and, and they have since the creation of Israel. So Israel's security cabinet voted to invoke Article 40, Aleph, Aleph. Oh, man. Uh, hang on a second. <laughs> Here, you take it. Gonna have to pull up vocabulary words because they always mean something. I mean, not always, but sometimes you come across a word that happens to be in a sentence that's extremely important. And, you know, this lends credence to what we've been saying for so long with the energies that we are uh, fixing to come across, the energies that are changing, coming upon us, that is going to bring. Uh, change to the world we live in I mean there's so much to say when an eclipse comes or when a certain conjunction is made it's like those are triggering points these are points where energy is now going to take a direction and it has this magnetic flow of energy and, and things are going to unfold you know I mean this is what they do they they plan stuff very very carefully very wisely so you know um just looking at this and looking at the symbolism and yeah i mean look at that and then go back and look at the look at the eclipses so i mean how this is this has been planned out for how long Thousands how long <laughs> and now these beings that don't rule with us face to face the ones we can't see they can see this information they do know when to roll out certain symbolisms and pull out certain vocabulary words based on different conjunctions and planetary alignments yeah <clears throat> so there's there's so many different things here uh so many different levels and and again you have the uh those that don't look deep at all and just take what they're given, um, taking it as this is all the acts of God. No, this is the acts of just beings that know how to manipulate humanity and they play with humanity uh, as if humans are little children because unfortunately so many of the masses truly are uh, children when it comes to understanding. You know, so easily we've been fooled by the mass media, by the politicians, by every system, in including the health system. Here you have the Hebrew Aleph. It's the first uh, letter in the alphabet. The Aleph is the old word for ox, and in Paleo-Hebrew it was a pictogram of an ox head with horns. Rotate the ancient pictogram to get our, our Greek A, Roman A, which both descended from it. And also, obviously, the A uh, of anarchy. Can't, can't we see? I mean, this is so clear. This is so clear. And yet you got people that are of a fundamentalist position, but just believing this is done by the creator of this universe. No. And, and that is just so completely naive. But again, they count on the naivete of those that they constantly constantly implant with their programming to the point where they don't realize they're being programmed can we see the paths of the eclipses do you are you familiar with the um, dyson sphere as cindy's always bringing up in the vatican what's a dyson sphere a dyson sphere is is something that is created to harness the power of stars 
And this is something that would be used by like a class two civilization on the Kardashev scale. Kardashev is the name of a, a Russian scientist who proposed that there would be different levels and layers uh, to civilizations as civilizations progressed. We're at 0.7 on that scale from what they show us, but a level one, a full 1.0, would be able to harness the power of its planet, control the weather, and, and the like. Yeah, well, uh, the reality is we're already controlling the weather. Level two would be able to har harness the energy of, of their, their sun. And the reality is that Dyson Sphere at the Vatican is, is showing just that, too. And it's, it's, a, it's a little hint for people that understand. But for those that are naive and just still believe in the biblical stories or in the stories of the Koran, because again, two thirds of the world looks through those lenses. The vast majority of people, whether they are, are really devout or not, identify as either Christian or, or Muslim. Mm -hmm. Right, you know, I mean, it's something that just it is so obvious. I mean, why is that Dyson Sphere sitting in the front lawn of the Vatican and people are pretending that everything that's going on is only uh, about climate change or it's about earth changes or it's, you know, only this or only that. No, these ones at the very top are in direct contact with those that really understand how to play this game on such a high level because they're able to look at things um they're able to look out you know thousands of years thousands of years and they know how things are going to unfold which really puts us at a disadvantage and the only way to really beat that is to extract yourself out of the system extract yourself out of the four pillars that they use to control us you know out of the educational system the monetary system the religious system uh definitely the medical system i mean that's really something that's created so that they can control you from cradle to grave because so many people end up needing uh, medical services where you get tied into the system and you, and you can't get out you can't get out in, unless you're willing to like lose your life which is horrible it's horrible what kind of beings actually set that up you know they're beings who desire control they're beings that are very hungry for uh, for their own satisfaction you know why do we read in the bible that you know when God smells burning flesh. He is pleased. I mean, really? And these are things that are adapted and embraced and then defended. A and they're defended with this type of cognitive dissonance like, oh, well, that part isn't really there. I'll just take I'll just take all the Beatitudes. You know, I don't think that's right. No. And, and the Beatitudes are beautiful and lovely. And yes, I mean, how could we not absolutely love Yeshua Jesus? I, I, he's just, you know, what can you say? The real Yeshua Jesus, uh, as amazing an individual as walked the planet. Yet it, it wasn't about blood sacrifice. It, it wasn't about original sin. No. And, and this video wasn't intended to go this way, but I just hit on all this and it's like, I got to just share all this with you, you know, because again, we want to give perspective. This is the Dyson sphere that is in the Vatican. Again, what is this showing? This is reflecting the ability to harness the energy of a sun. Uh, and we'll go there next. Let's go over here. This is the Kardashev scale. So a type 1 civilization can use and store all the energy of its planet. Type 2 can use and store all the energy of its host star. Type 3 can control the energy of the scale of the galaxy. And type 4 can control energy at the scale of an entire universe. So the creator of this universe, you would say, comes from uh, a type 4 or beyond. Literally, and yet that creator of the universe, this universe, is not source. And that's something that you know, monotheists can't understand that, well, what do you mean? The creator of this universe is not, you mean this isn't all? No, there's many universes. This universe is just a single cell in something bigger. And so as we go up through the line of this is again transmigration of the soul because the soul is eternal it has no beginning it has no end 
And we're just having a temporary experience as humans on planet Earth. This is not our normal state of being. Yes, if you're familiar with the ancient Greek writings, as well as other traditions, there was a time when the moon did not exist in the sky. Scientists won't tell you that, but the scientists are on the payroll of, you know, for the most part, the scientists are on the payroll of the control system. In ancient writings and traditions, one can find proof of a time when the moon did not exist. Democritus and Anaxagoras mentioned that there was a time when no moon could be seen in the night sky. Well, it, it came in and was put into place after the Younger Dryas period. Uh, th that horrible uh, period of depopulation of the entirety of the planet, which happened you know, roughly 12,000 years ago, 11,700 years ago. And, you know, in, Mar in Arcadia, which is an area of uh, Italy, north of Rome, they were known as the proselytes, meaning those that were before the moon. Because, again, there's a constant getting rid of existing populations that know secrets and supplanting them with more programmed and programmable people. Apollonius from Rhodes mentioned something similar. So, wait a minute. If the moon was put in place by somebody with high technology, then if we look at eclipses in a new light, there's a real purpose. They're giving signals out. Yes, this is the time of anarchy. This is A, this is time of new beginnings by wiping out that which is old. This is basically their sign saying we are going to wipe out the United States and the NATO nations. We're going to supplant the existing order with a new order. It's clear as day. This is the true control system. So, you know, again, if you are thinking Yahweh is the creator of the universe, oh, that's sadly mistaken. Yahweh is really a warlord, is one of those that came down. In fact, you know, some will point to the book of Enoch and talk about fallen angels coming down. Now, you know, the original word angel translates to messenger coming off the Greek. What you have to realize, too, is that when we look to the New Testament, we're looking mostly at Greek translations. And another, you know, fact that we'll talk about in, in upcoming videos is the fact that when you look to the language of uh, the actual apostles who would have been the apostles like when you talk about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and those four apostles which were four among 200 plus gospels that were out there for you know, and, and Luke you know uh, again each we'll get into that in, in, in other videos but let's just suffice it to say that these these gospels were not written by the people they're attributed to be written to about you know it's it's not actually the writing of luke it's not actually the writing of john revelation is not the writing of john i mean these these are all basically attributed to somebody but they're not written by them and and the oldest copies we have are 300 years after yeshua jesus walked the planet well, I mean, considering where all of these people came from, I mean, how can they have names like John and, and Paul and, and Luke? Yeah, well, exactly. And the other thing is they didn't speak Greek. <laughs> so how did they write it when, in Greek when they didn't speak Greek? They spoke Aramaic and Hebrew. So, you know, this is something that, again, unless you're somebody that, you know, has taken biblical scholarship seriously, and you're not going to understand this. Obviously, they're not written by those that they are attributed to, you know, having written them. So now when we look at this uh, and all the news from a different perspective, now we can see that what we have is Genesis 11 again. Genesis 11 is, is the Tower of Babel. And that is talking about the fact that we cannot have humanity united because Genesis 11, it, it's, it, it's again using the terminology Elohim in the plural. Come, look, humanity is united. What do humans say? Hey, let's get together. Let's build something and let's work together, guys. Okay. Yeah. So they work together. 
they're actually building a civilization that's peaceful. So the Elohim, the mighty ones, see this happening and they say, wait, let's go down there. We can't have this. Let's separate them. Let's split them up. We'll, we'll divide them up into little tribes. Uh, and then we'll confuse the language because back in, in that day and time, people had active pineal glands. So they didn't even have to really speak to each other. They could read what the other person was uh, thinking. And, and yeah, we are heading back there again. So this is exactly how those that oppress humanity end up getting worshipped by humanity, end up getting the energy of humanity that they're sending out through those church spires right back to the ones that are oppressing us. Ah, today is Israel's 9-11. It, you know, again, the history, Israel was recreated in 1948 after having been disbanded in, in 70 AD by the Romans. And so again, Article 40, 40, oh wait a minute, 40 is a biblical number of completion again, 40 days in the desert. See, all this numerology is, is messages <clears throat> to those that understand in fact, it's even in the Bible that Jesus talked openly. Jesus, Yeshua, talked openly to the disciples, but he talked in parables to the masses. And so, you know, again, if you're just going off of uh, the mainstream fundamentalist view, you don't know the truth. You really don't. You don't have a clue. You're totally caught up believing in MSN, CNN. You're believing in all the politicians. You're, you're believing in the mainstream. And this is what they are counting on. So now Netanyahu tells Gaza residents to get out now as he vows to use all the IDF capabilities to destroy Hamas. Netanyahu said that they will win this war, but the price will be unbearably heavy. Hamas wants to murder us all. Murdering children and mothers in their homes in their beds is an enemy that kidnaps elderly people, children, and young girls. Here we go. Mm -hmm. um, they know no boundaries. There's no boundaries when it comes to things like this. People, their belief system is constructed as such where they honestly think that they're doing the absolute right thing, you know, with every fiber of their being. They're acting, you know, with their own, um, what they think is best. And this is kind of the belief system that we're up against and this should show and explain how important it is to control the belief system how important it is for the controllers to create a belief system where people want to defend it to the death so giving you know each nation a book and saying you know here this is your belief system if anyone else disagrees then they're just going to have to die and they teach this from such a young age and then people rise up and what are they going to do? They're, because of their belief system, what they believe, what they have heard from others that have written something, they're going to rise up and really harm others. And so you have that statement by Netanyahu saying, when is it right to kill you know, women and children? Well, how about over here? <laughs> when the Israelites were conquering Canaan and taking it over, at the edge of the sword... They devoted to destruction everything in the city, men, women, young, old, oxen, sheep, and donkeys. This is from uh, Joshua, and, and this is uh, 620, you know, and, and the ones uh, after this, up to about 25, it's talking about this event. So again, they killed every man, woman, and child. They killed little ones. They, they killed babies. Babies just out of the womb. This this is the belief system of Netanyahu. And it's it's again, I guess it's you know, obviously it's it's okay when it's not your people, but it's not okay when it's your people. The reality should be it's never okay. And meanwhile, Joshua told the two men who had spied out the land, go into the house of the prostitute, bring out uh, the woman and all those who are with her, just as you promised her. And then it goes on to talk about, but also take the gold and the silver and put it into the storehouse of the Lord or the storehouse of Yahweh. Yeah, so w when you see all this, we, we got to recognize that these people, you know, are always, 
always twisting things to their advantage. So Netanyahu says murdering, murdering children and mothers in their homes in their beds is an enemy that kidnaps elderly people, children, and young girls. The Israelites themselves did that to uh, the Canaanites. And this is, this is a nonstop cycle. And then you have, again, blind support from those that believe the Bible is the word of the God, of, of the creator of this universe. Now, it is the word of a being that was taken to be a God, but it, it really is more of a demonic being when you get down to it. Just look at it by its acts. And look at it by, and so that, that one time with Joshua, that's just one time. There's many times. They went to city to city exterminating every person. Netanyahu announces that Israel is starting a blockade of Gaza and will cut it off from all electricity, fuel, and goods. So again, you know, starve them out. And as this person says, everybody should condemn this. It's a war crime. Yeah, so it's genocide. And yet it happens. And then we see people here out in the streets supporting. This is Rotterdam. Now there's massive amounts of, of Muslims in Europe and in the United States at this time. And all over they're celebrating because they understand the Palestinian side, that they've been oppressed. Every time something happens, they suffer tenfold or a hundredfold. And this was part of what happened. And sorry about the photo, you know, because this is brutal. But this is a music festival where there were hundreds of people dancing and having a great time. Then parish, people were parasailing, paragliding in. Soldiers were paragliding in and started to slaughter everybody at the, at the music festival. Uh, there are reports that there are Americans and Europeans in there as well. Some went into hiding and, and have only recently came, came out. Um, really, w the way they were running and the way it looked, it rem reminded me so much of um, the vision I had of when it happens to the U.S., which I don't think is far away. And it reminded me of, of people leaving Florida uh, en masse trying to get away and trying to get out of the peninsula. And that was something uh, that came to me when I first moved to the South back in 2007, the first time I had that particular um, vision. So the leader of Hamas uh, has been killed by IDF forces, but that doesn't matter because, you know, again, it, 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 another one will just pop up in, in their place. And, and when you get the, the point of us rambling is religious zealotry causes actions that are so contrary where is you know turn the other cheek it doesn't exist when you start getting riled up and and again it's that tribalism we have to start to look at things from a totally different perspective if we understood we're all cells in the body of earth would then we'd realize we're acting like cancer we're acting like viruses we're destroying ourselves and when, when you destroy somebody else when you kill somebody, it, it destroys a part of your soul and, it's, and it scars you and that lasts for lifetimes often. It is a learning experience, this human experience. And so, you know, the lesson to be learned is really what, what Yeshua Jesus was trying to, to teach about compassion and love. You know, onward Christian soldiers is, is it doesn't make any sense. It's an oxymoron. It, it, it's one of the stupidest statements you could ever make. And yet that's exactly what people accept. It, it, it's just amazing how people take the programming. But not really when you understand that, you know, the water is is part of the problem the food is part of the problem the frequencies that are always penetrating the minds of humanity is part of the problem people are not clear and and this is intentional so it's operation alasqua flood we're not waiting for for orders from anyone to participate in the battle the strategic strike will have consequences today the resistance determines the timing of the battle not israel so this is somebody from the Palestinian Islamic Jihad movement. And again, when we, when we look at Christianity, the end of the Bible, so go out and tell the good news to everyone. Convert, you know, all the, all the pagans, the heathen, 
And when we look to Islam, it, it, it's even stronger, you know, because again, it's that jihad, holy war mentality. Okay, and if they won't, will not, you know, convert, then what? Well, you know, that's not good. We, we've seen a lot of heads rolling. And again, two wrongs don't make a right, because the reality is one size never fits all. As we see the Russian foreign ministry, this is Lavrov saying, they call for immediate ceasefire and a peace plan based on the establishment of an independent Palestinian state within the 1967 borders with East Jerusalem as its capital. Now, this is something Israel was was not going along with. And, you know, again, the, the bigger purpose is, is the war. And and even those that profess and even those like nobody goes to church more than Joe Biden as far as president. Do you think he's got a heart of gold? Heck no. Do you think the Pope has a heart of gold? No, the Vatican is, is as much the seat of evil as there is on this planet. And we're just speaking plainly. Yeah, <laughs> very plainly, because we, we see this over and over and over in these people that are are so demonic and pushing so much death and destruction are the ones embracing and pushing the Bible that so many people also uh, embrace and defend. You know, I mean, there is good in it, but when you wrap up this good with that evil th and you're not separating it and saying, you know, no, 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 this is not my belief system. I'm going to create my own belief system because I'm not going to follow this other trail of belief systems and defend it with my life. You know, it's just, it's so wrong on so many levels. And we're, we're real close to waking up. We're, are, we are so close. I mean, to having so many people waking up on a monument level, I think each and every person needs to look at where are they supporting the systems of either religion, education, monetary, medicine, and you know, don't allow yourself to hold up the circus tent because those four pillars, they hold up this huge circus tent of control. And we need to realize that it's all, you know, it, it, they're playing it against us. They're, they're coming out and they're saying, well, this thing is, is good and this is wonderful and this medicine is new technology. I mean, we were watching something last night I mean, we do enjoy a little bit of regular something every now and then. But the most disgusting part about it was they, they kept on every single commercial. They were touting the cure. You know, every single commercial touting the cure. And that was just really difficult to watch other, other than that. You know, it's how many people are still stuck in that mainstream. Uh, the sad reality is exactly what, uh, you know, some of the top NAZI minds had said. You keep repeating a lie enough times, you know, the people will believe it and start to take it as absolute truth. You tell them to go jump off a, a bridge, they will at some point. If you say it enough, they'll think, well, it seems like a good thing to do. They told us to. And here you have Erdogan saying, Peace in the region can only be achieved through a two-state solution. The Palestinian issue must be resolved fairly. Uh, so, yeah, absolutely. You know, meanwhile, you know, remember, uh, Turkey uh, and the U.S. have been actually blowing up each other's equipment lately, even though Turkey is part of NATO. And here we have hundreds of Israeli tanks being deployed to the border with Lebanon, Syria, and the Pallone region. Absolutely wider conflict is uh, coming. Hamas released a video showing these kamikaze drones, which are very similar to the ones that were used in Ukraine by uh, Russia, of course. And you see, is Russia, Iran uh, working together to overturn global security? You could add to that dozens of other countries that will be on that side. And you know, the most significant one is obviously China. But the reality is the controllers behind all this have, have shifted uh, their, their method. It's just, just again, if you haven't even noticed, it, it's, it always goes in the same direction. Because really when uh, the beings that we would call the Anunnaki, you want to call them the Nibiruans, those of the draconian system who are enslaved to AI, came here again, Sumeria. That's where they were. And then what do we have? We have the ascendancy of Greece, then Rome. As you see, that power is going west. Uh, then you had the Holy Roman Emp 
Empire, and then you had uh, the English Empire, and then the shift went to the United States. Now the shift is is jumping across the pond, the big pond, the Pacific, over to Beijing. Uh, <clears throat> but it, it's going to be short-lived because, again, uh, the other thing that really hit me was with the Day of the Lord. Uh, the Day of the Lord is nothing to be looked forward to. The Bible will tell you that it's a day of terror. It is a, a, a day of uh, the, all the tribes of the earth looking up in the sky and seeing something that makes them cry out in fear and abject terror. Sounds a lot like an alien invasion. And, and here again, we have little leaks like Project Bluebeam to get people to think, well, they're going to fake an alien invasion. Well, again, we are already under alien control, dark alien control that you can call demonic. Absolutely. So here you have uh, the spokesperson for the al Qassam brigades saying we thank Iran who provide us weapons, money, and other equipment to destroy the Zionists. And here we see Iran has already at least three fully functional nuclear bombs. Again, they're on the same side as China, who has many more than three, and Russia, who has the most on the planet. So, you know, but again, the guys have said they will not allow total nuclear uh, destruction. And there's been so many times when uh, nuclear weapons have been disarmed for when UFOs have passed by. Why did they allow tests then, some would say? Uh, well, again, these beings are not infallible, you know, the beings on the higher d densities. And then again, the benevolent ones of the higher higher densities, they don't want to interfere on, on things in planet Earth because this is about our soul evolution. This is about us discovering things for ourselves and us standing up for ourselves and saying, no, we're not going to be played by you anymore. So it's really up to us uh, to change what we have going on in never-ending cycles. U.S. weapons left behind in Afghanistan were used to attack Israel. This shouldn't surprise us at all. High-ranking IDF commanders said U.S. weapons left behind in Afghanistan by the Biden administration were found in the hands of Palestinian groups active in the Gaza Strip. So remember that whole thing, you know, it felt like it had a much, much greater purpose and we'll see those weapons later. Uh, yeah, that absolutely, absolutely. And, and they were significant. 22,174 Humvees? What? 634 of, of these armored military vehicles? 155 mineproof vehicles? 42,000 pickup trucks and SUVs of a military persuasion. Look at all this stuff. 358,000 assault rifles. I know. And, you know, I'm looking at all these things. And, of course, they need some type of fuel or some type of energy. And then where does that all come from? I know Humvees don't get very good gas mileage. I'm pretty sure that tanks do not either. Neither do trucks or SUVs, helicopters. Where does all this gasoline come from? Well, now that Saudi Arabia has applied to join BRICS and, you know, the, the entirety of, of the power structure has shifted. So what, what they left behind was an enormous amount of power that now the, the Taliban uh, has perhaps already used. And don't forget, the Taliban said they want permission uh, to go and cross through three Islamic nations to make their way to Israel because now is the time for Islam to unify. And I do think you will see, uh, and I've said this more than more than once, I think you will see a united Islamic uh, military force uh, on a scale with, uh, well, really past anything we've seen in modern times. More of a, more of a, Gosh, you're going to have to go back in the time of the Crusades and stuff. And there after that, uh, to see such a, a battle that's going to be mostly Christianity uh, versus Islam. But this is exactly what Albert Pike said back in 1871 was planned. And he, he, he talked about the restoration of Israel in the First World War. And that was going to lead... Uh, to the Balfour Declaration and going to lead to uh, the Second World War, which, you know, again, the travesty and the tragedy that went to 
happen against not just uh, the Jewish people, many others, gypsies and so many other groups uh, also suffered, but it, it led to the sympathy uh, for the Holocaust that, that ended up creating the conditions where people, you, you know, were just like, yes, of course they should have their homeland. So thus you kiss, you kick somebody else out, uproot them. This is exactly what the cycle does. And, you know, so here we go. You know, this is going to be a holy war. This is why we harp on the religious side of it, because it is their number one tool. And, you know, Christians will automatically take the side of, of Israel. Hamas is claiming Ukraine sold them weapons that they used in the attack against Israel. This would not be surprising either. Not at all. Again, all the billions of dollars going to Ukraine, we know the way the system is. Ultimately, they're going to make sure that it's used against us. So again, we are paying for our own demise. And here we have Mark Esper, former U.S. Secretary of Defense, calling the Palestinian surprise attack on Israel an intelligence failure suggested it will have a, lip, uh, a lasting ripple effect. Completely caught off guard. No, it, it's because, again, the power structure is about a big purpose. And that purpose is the destruction of Babylon the Great, the destruction of, of NATO and the U.S., the imposition of a one world order. Again, order out of chaos, order out of chaos. It's right there in front of our faces. So this is all they're doing. They need us to destroy ourselves down to a more manageable number and destroy uh, all the existing power structures so that then people will just be like, hey, yeah, you know, that, that smart city sounds wonderful. I'm tired of living in the woods uh, eating uh, roots. Yeah, yeah, just just bring it on, whatever. I don't care. Uh, do I have my choice, uh, right arm or left arm? Ouch, yeah, that wasn't so bad. This is what they're banking on. This lady served the IDF 25 years ago in intelligence. No way that they didn't know what's coming. Of course not. And again, they will sacrifice kings, will sacrifice pawns. They'll even sacrifice sometimes rooks, knights, and bishops, maybe even the queen. Uh, it, it's historical in order to get what they want. And here you have Senator Cruz saying what ha Hamas did is a grotesque act of war. What's infuriating is that it was paid for by the 46 regime sending billions to Iran, even millions directly to the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip. You know, this is all part of that bigger divide within the country. Russian attacks are edging closer and closer to NATO territory, as you can see here. Yeah, <clears throat> when it's go time, when it's go time, and it might be go time very, very soon, because again, uh, Ali, Alois Ermiler's prophecies, again, um, he was somebody that was employed by by the military and by the police to to give locations where in, in World War II, the Axis were going to bomb so they could evacuate people and put people in safe areas, because this is how good this guy was as a psychic. And he could tell you where the dead body was buried in a murder. Uh, yeah, this is how good the guy was. Well, in his vision, when is the time that it starts? It's the time of harvest. Mm. This is the time of harvest. Uh, so again, it, it feels like it very well may start. Um, it may start this month. It, it's a possibility, but absolutely by by spring, it's full bore. He said when Russia really goes, they roll right through Ukraine like it's nothing, but they will be reinforced by other uh, many other nations. And they are being reinforced right now. Again, when you saw Prigozhin go uh, and apparently be killed, but yet you see Wagner troops uh, going to Belarus, they're getting ready to uh, take back Kaliningrad and move into Poland, probably Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia as well. And so this whole area will be steamrolled. It will be steamrolled. And now for Turkey, they'll basically face uh, a unified Islamic uh, front. And we'll get to that in uh, videos coming along later. 
China raises gold reserves for 11th straight month. We were talking to David Debine and DAP 2030, and he was harping on this. He was even saying that China is encouraging its citizens to buy gold. It wants everybody that's a, a citizen to buy like an ounce of gold is what he was saying. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, I don't understand all these things, but I know that they do want us to take a page out of China's book and start doing what they do and they are setting up a new financial system so I don't see why it would be a bad idea because so many of us are on our way out of the system no longer wanting to support the circus tent but we do need to utilize the system to get out of the system so whatever that takes whatever that looks like on your way to self-sufficiency maybe this is a good idea. Yeah, and physical, you know, now gold, who can afford to, to buy gold? It, not most people, really, the vast majority of people are month to month, but you might be able to get some silver. So, you know, again, silver has been somewhere in the 20s uh, as far as, uh, you know, dollars uh, for an ounce. Gold, <laughs> yeah, you know, way, way, way more than that. And it is kind of out of most people's range. But yeah, anything that has value in trade and, you know, that could be uh, food. It, it could be a lot of different things. So here you have a guy. All right, let's listen. Video. And it's a, a black guy and he's from another country and he's holding out this card. And he said, yeah, the UN sent me over here. I'm a soldier for the UN. And I, they give me this card, and it's got a computer chip in it, like a bank card, you know. But it's got the guy's picture on it, information, number. This guy's, uh, he's a number. And, um, you know, he's telling them that he was told, he was given a phone, he was given this card, and he was told to go to a certain city and get a place to stay and wait. They would get in touch with him through the phone, I guess a mass text message or something, tell him where to go when they needed him to do something. But basically, he was free to come into the country and hang out. Now, listen, he's not just going to come live here. If he's a soldier for the U.N., he's not going to come live here for six months and then pay him $2,200 a month, okay? Whatever they're planning on doing, they're planning on doing it within, I would say, the next 90 days to 120 days. Uh, but he's going to he, he's gonna go get a place to live. So you get the picture and, you know, again, this is not the first person talking about uh, UN documentation, U UN credit cards uh, being paid. This is on a massive, massive scale. You know, you look at the change in birth rates, 2007 to 2022, the darker, the bigger the percentage. Look at Utah, down 36 percent, uh, North Dakota down 9.3 percent. Uh, I think you can see the patterns here. And again, uh, I know that you guys understand what's going on in that picture. American politics continues to get messier and uglier by the day. Hunter Biden, son of U.S. President Joe Biden, now formally charged with a gun crime, but the video is not available to be seen in the U.S. Keep saying video is not available. Video is not available. S Singapore, no. Australia, no. U.S. Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting Um we, we know that they've told us outright, like in Canada and certain places, you're not going to be able to just watch anything. And, and we're going to get into a period when all the chaos happens. We're not going to be able to communicate with each other. So, you know, again, think about your location at all times. You know, think about if something like Israel happens here, wherever here is. Where would you go? What would you do? I mean, are you far enough away from things that you would feel comfortable? Do you have enough uh, support around you? Do you have enough water, enough food, enough, you know, all the basic stuff we always talk about and so many other channels talk about too. Scientists say they confirmed evidence that humans arrived in the Americas far earlier than previously thought. And then they just give us a date of like 20,000 years ago. It's like, oh, come on. I mean, this is so stupid. It's so stupid. You know, there's been high civilizations here in the Americas. And again, everything is covered up because, again, where's all the Native Americans? You know, that whole culture has been kind of wiped out. Where's the giants before them? Uh, they're they're almost completely gone. There might be a few here and there, 
uh, and they're portrayed as as being all cannibalistic. No, they're not all cannibalistic. And then you have to ask yourself, why does the you know Eucharist of the Catholic Church seem to celebrate that type of thing? Ah, uh, you know, it, it's just revisionist history as this parrot is lockstep. He is getting ready for war. He is heading off. He is marching off to do his duty. And, you know, what's our duty in a time of war? It, it's really to wake people up to the fact that w- we're all being manipulated. Definitely. So, you know, when we look at all of this information and we hear that word harvest, whenever I hear that word harvest, it's just bone chilling to me. It's not a very good vocabulary word. It has so much involved in the word harvest. You know, that's to imply that something has been uh, being prepared for a very long time. Something has been being tended to. Something is being... uh, get something is getting ready to be picked and it's to me it's just not going to be a good thing in any way shape or form you know it's it, it's where we really have to stop and look at all the media coming in look at anyone who is holding up or touting part of the control system and go within and find your own and and don't be afraid to sit down and say huge prayers of peace over this planet over the globe over over your home your neighborhood your city your country and understand that those prayers for peace or even rituals for peace is something that we can do it's something that comes within us and and it's you know it's been treated like it's a bad thing you know to do a ritual for peace that's a bad thing but the controllers they look at these planetary alignments and they do their rituals for war and control and we can push back this is a duality type of situation that we're in and we all have to decide where are we at in that duality spectrum and what kind of light do we want to have around us yeah and again you know you could look at the parables there and you know this one right here um this is matthew 13 through 30 uh, parable of the weeds let them both grow together until the harvest at that time i'll tell the harvesters first collect the weeds tie them in bundles to be burned and then gather the wheat into my barn and you know the the thoughts of hellfire you know being thrown into the lake of fire uh and and don't fear that which can destroy the body but that that can destroy the body and the soul well the reality is the soul is indestructible and the reality is in 4d we don't get burned we we can't get burned and in fact you know there is really no taste in 4d either uh, we come to 3d for the for those experiences uh, so again, this is just fear-based control, and and yet, yeah, you know, the the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed in the sense that we have to cultivate the peace, the love, and compassion, and grow that inside of us, instead of you know growing the fear-based indoctrination, the the fear that will lead to acts of extremity against others for fear of what's going to happen to oneself and this is what they are banking on and it really does it it starts with us inside going within to create the change yeah and i just want to finish with the uh, the quote from the bhagavad gita to give you a, a a different perspective and how they are so different the the soul is taught it's taught openly that the soul is immortal it's indestructible and so many things what they do is they teach us here it's all fear based you know it's like if you don't believe this one thing you're going to burn in hell for eternity forever your soul is going to be burned in in hell and they teach us that from such a small age and i'm always saying this and how could adults you know how could grown adults tell these things and teach these things to children and it's because they've heard it from other adults which have heard it from other adults which have heard it from other adults which comes down from quote on high unquote and it's just something to keep us in fear and to keep us from looking outside the lines for something that might be peaceful something that might 
where there might not be totally fear laden vocabulary words. Yeah, so that which pervades the entire body, know it to be indestructible. No one can cause the destruction of the imperishable soul. These bodies are perishable, but the dwellers in these bodies are eternal, indestructible, indestructible and impenetrable. This is where, you know, when we look to the Bhagavad Gita as opposed to the Bible, you're seeing uh, Golden Age and Silver Age teachings in, in these books like the Bhagavad Gita, and not the, the, the teachings of the controllers, because where's the control in that? If you knew that, no, you know, they can't control what happens to you after you leave your body. Oh, you, your acts would be much, much different. Again, jihad is holy war. It's the idea that you're doing something for a higher power, but no, you're doing something for a lower power. You're impeding uh, the free will. You're causing uh, death and destruction in really the name of something that is not godlike at all. In fact, it is quite the opposite, truly, truly demonic. And what really we have is, is the law of cause and effect, which is called karma. And only when we understand that we keep our, when we're able to keep our emotions in check, as the only key to happiness is the reduction in desires. That doesn't mean that you don't have goals. That doesn't mean anything like that. No, it, it's talking about the the lower desires, you know, the, the things of the ego. When we start to see the bigger picture and want to truly, truly help others, because the, the only path to peace is through service to others in the truest sense. Uh, and, and that is all about letting others understand you know, the whole concept of original sin is, is just put on there to basically gaslight you into behaving a certain way. They want you to have to say those words. You know, it's like Jesus Christ is the only Lord and Savior, the only Lord and Savior. And if you don't believe that, your soul is going to burn in hell for eternity. That's just that really, you know, it's like, why does it have to be that way? That's something that someone has told you. That's some something that some controllers wrote in a book that has handed it down from generation to generation and now you believe it but when you sit down and you open your heart to these angelic beings you know yes yeshua is a wonderful being he's an ascended master he's a great teacher there's so many wonderful things about him he works with us we work with him all the time i have channeled him he's beautiful he's benevolent but he's not that which what in what they say in the Bible. He's not that. He doesn't demand that you worship him. He doesn't demand that he's the only savior. No, a lot of these beings are here to help us and for us to open our heart chakra and see who needs to come in at what particular time in your life so you can enjoy your full experience here on earth being a human with the duality that we have been given for the idea of growth. And the, <clears throat> this is also from the Gita, and it says, whenever the balance of the universe is disturbed by external in interference from any of its parts, then I reveal myself as the power of eternal balancing for the protection of those who are in harmony and the rectification of everything disharmonious. I incarnate myself at every juncture of time. And so this is attributed to Krishna, Christ, Krishna, you know, this is where they, they've taken this from. But the reality is the energy and, and disposition of Krishna and of the true historical Yeshua Jesus is really the same. They, they are bringers of peace. They are also teachers uh, of the true, what's in the West as the mystery traditions, the, the true uh, way the universe works and our true potential. So they had the same mission. They really had the same mission. And neither of them, you know, had the mission of being a blood sacrifice. That is totally the controller's uh, point of view. No, they were trying to, to tell us uh, to wake up. Because again, the, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of, of God is within us right now. It's just up to us to manifest it. So on that note, I will say source bless and namaste. Namaste.